had before. We have a lot more poverty. Um, we need strong leaders um, to engage a lot of our students. Our school system um, is really struggling. Um, we have certain schools that do really well. Um, so any mentoring um, programs that Towson does um, would be helpful in Baltimore County. And um, it, you know, again, might be a good way to give back to the community that um, that you're in. And it's, they're not all necessarily right here in Towson, but close by um, in different communities. So, um, anyway, I'm I'm glad you had me to to speak. It's it's good to be back. And um, uh, Aneme's here, and Aneme was one of my interns, and she invited me to come a while back, and um, glad to be here. Does anyone have any questions about the county in general or um, Towson University and relations with the? Yeah, another thing that we, uh, you may or may not know, we don't have a mayor in Towson. And I'm actually the first person from Towson to represent Towson on the county council in 21 years. We, our council districts are, like I said, they're huge. And um, we had a person from Perry Hall, which is about 15 miles from here representing Towson. And not that that was necessarily a bad thing, but it's good to have uh, the knowledge of the area um, when we're, we have representatives representing so you guys look super excited <laughs> so any questions or yes sir i just got one um so how do you think towson prepared you for what you do in life currently um I, you know i i think towson was a great um was a great uh starting point in the sense that um I always felt like Towson, and I, I still hear this, a, a lot of people talk about Towson University and say it's a more humble organization or a hum more humble school. I've heard employers say they want Towson University um, students, graduates, um, because they like the fact that we don't necessarily come with a, um, a chip on our shoulder. That's not, that's not the right word, but... You know we're we're not as uh, you know we're not an Ivy League obviously, but um, we 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 come ready to work. Um, a lot of times, if if you were a student here, not not to say you didn't do well academically, um, but a lot of a lot of times people found Towson. It might not have been their first choice, but then they got here and and were really um, happy that they came, came here. And we've seen. We've seen people in our, because I live here, um, my kids are in their 20s now. Um, my daughter, my oldest daughter, who used to tell me, um, Dad, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I know you went to Towson. I'm not going to go to Towson. I'm not going to go to college 100 yards away from where I went to high school. I'm just not doing it. And then she ended up here and she loved it. And um, we've had we've had kids in the neighborhood around here who didn't necessarily want to go to Towson, not because it's, you know, they didn't, it was a, you know, a, a second tier school or anything. It's just that when you grow up here, you don't necessarily want to go to school right here. You know, you want to go somewhere more, so, you know, the grass is always greener somewhere else. Um, but um, as far as me, I, like I said, I, I always felt that Towson was a diverse place. Um, I had a lot of fun here. Um, met a lot of people from all over the state and New Jersey, New York. And um, so I, I had a great time. Just a two minute warning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Anybody, anybody else? else? Yeah. Any more questions, anybody? You guys are very advanced here. I, I, the voting Thanks. system, I, I think we need this for county council. If you've, if you've ever seen our meetings, we're, we're, we've just gotten to, uh, to online, you know, putting our meetings on Zoom and uh, we don't have any anything nearly as uh, academically advanced as this. So I commend you guys for everything you're doing. It's much more uh, organized than what we, we had in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so very much indeed. Um, as anyone, I'm sorry.
If there is no questions, um, well, thank you so very much. Councilor. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. We'll turn it on, but if anybody has any further questions uh, related to the councilman, uh, maybe they could think of some uh, later on. All right, next up, we have uh, Ms. Edna Primrose. Primrose, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's the president of the Township University Foundation. Welcome, to, uh, President Primrose. First of all, uh, just thanks for having uh, the councilman and me today. It's always great to be able to just spend some time Talking to students, one of my favorite things. Um, so as Sean said, I'm president of the Towson University Foundation Board of Directors. So to anyone besides Jordan and Sean and the executive board know what the foundation does. All right, what do we do? Well, I think you kind of, kind of manage like gifts that we see by like alumni that donated. Yep, that's exactly right. Uh, he mentioned uh, managing all the gifts and donations that come to Towson. So yeah, that's exactly right. So the Towson University Foundation is a, a nonprofit, a, has a 501c3 um, rating. And so basically we are part of the university and that we're partners with the university, but we're also a separate organization so that you have the checks and balances with all of the gifts that come in. So when you say gifts, you think of money, but we get things like art collections. We've got a jazz collection of music and instruments from um, the past president of the foundation board. It can really be anything. And so we work with people to appraise the value, but most of it is in, um, in cash. And I'm excited uh, with the councilman talking about how sophisticated you are. I'm so happy we finally uh, now accept PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, Cash App, all of that, because that was really a hindrance because people use their phones so much, you know, to um, to make a quick donation and things like that. So I love it because, um, as Sean said, I'm a, I'm a Towson alum as well. Uh, graduated in 84, business administration with a concentration in finance. And it is, it's really fun to be a part of Towson now. And uh, I've been on the board for about seven years and we bring the gifts to life. So like the university union being renovated and it is spectacular. Um, having the student emergency fund, that's something that really got um, elevated during COVID, for example. And uh, I think that that is one of the examples of how we can be flexible and also uh, react quickly when there's an emergency. So there was no hesitation around getting the word out about the student emergency fund to help people. Uh, we also sometimes do fundraising for buildings like the health professions building and the science complex, which are incredible. And, and then we have a donor who uh, created a center for adults with autism. So it really spans, it's really, it, I don't know, I guess the best way to say is that it's a global view of what you need. So we try to be as comprehensive as we can to meet your needs. So when, when you identify something, you know, you can have your representatives bring it to the board. We work really closely with the colleges. So all of them get their own donations. And we're kind of the steward or the shepherd of those funds. So we help them make sure that they're responsible and spend all their money and um, also create great programs and services. We have a foundation grant program ourselves where we give out $25,000 a year to four different programs. It's always has to involve faculty, staff, and students. So that's kind of neat. We've had a lot of innovative programs like working in cybersecurity, um, forensic science, uh, women in STEM, like all kinds of different pieces and even mentoring uh, middle schoolers. So it's really um, pretty great. Besides that, the only other thing I wanted to say is we have over a thousand scholarships, about 1100 I think we gave out last year. Um, and so we invest in funding uh, through a portfolio, kind of like you talk to your parents about 401ks and things like that to make sure that we grow the money. So if someone gives us uh, funding for scholarships or other programs, we want to make sure that money is going to be there in perpetuity, pretty much forever. I started a scholarship about four years ago, Primrose Better Scholarship for a student in Prince George's County. And now um, I endowed it a couple years ago, or last year, no, two years ago, during the RISE campaign. So now it goes into the cycle of our investment portfolio. So who's a business major and has done some financial planning? Anybody intern? So what was that like? Um, I liked it. 
it's not my um it's not my presentation, but it's just so you got a good sense of like how people create a plan around managing their money so that it keeps growing, right? Yeah, so there's a lot of decisions to be made and things like that. Um, so you, you can never start too early. That's all I'm going to say to y'all. You can never start too early. And I, I love that many of our employers that are um, hiring students to be interns uh, offer permanent employment. So it's pretty neat. Um, the only other thing I would say is that we're advocates, you know, we're ambassadors for the university, so you'll see me at a lot of events, really just talking about how great Towson is. It's important for us to be part of the community, so I'm glad to see the councilman here. So who's been to the startup at the Armory? Okay, that's great. So you got to make sure to go up there. It was there for a treat, so most of y'all should have been there. Oh. <laughs> Okay. So that is huge. When I was at Towson, we didn't communicate with the community at all. Everything stopped where the Starbucks is, because that's where Pizza Palace was. We didn't we didn't go up the hill. There weren't all the restaurants and choices. None of that stuff was there. Even the stores were like upscale, so there wasn't really a reason for us to be in the community. So I'm very excited about having the startup at the Armory up the street, right around the corner, having apartments up there so that we really as a university, and with you all, all the talent you have can move into the community and be a part of it even more. So I think that's super exciting. All right, I will um, entertain questions if you have any questions. All right, does anybody have any questions for President Primrose? Uh, Representative Robinson. Hello, uh, I was just wondering like, if you could get more information about the scholarships is like how competitive they are and what they require. I know you said there's a thousand, so yeah. I don't think you've got too much to detail, but just a little bit. Sure. So um, each donor gets to, uh, to help determine the parameters of their scholarship. So mine um, is specifically in the College of Business and Economics because that's where I graduated from. And it is a student who lives in Prince George's County because I lived in Bowie in Prince George's County when I went to school and just demonstrated financial need. That's that's it. So College of Business and um, live in PG County. In other areas, you know, it may be specific to the college. Um, they may have uh, some other specific parameters around it. But in general, um, it is a demonstration of financial need for the majority of them. Yeah. And but again, it might be specific to a college, depending on um, the donor. The donor could say any student anywhere. Um, could be a junior or a senior, could be incoming freshmen. You can really design it. And I was I was actually surprised at how easy it was because um I'm not rich. I didn't I didn't grow up in philanthropy in any way. You know, I mean I barely could afford to be at Towson when I was here. Every semester was just praying and just trying to figure it out, you know. Um, but Towson makes it very easy to be a part of the philanthropic community. And, and I will tell you, like when we did the RISE campaign, it ended last year, we raised over a million dollars, like $106 million. But like, I think 4 million came from donors who gave uh, $50 or less, $100 or less. And then 2 million of that came from donors who gave $50 or less. So we'll take the $5, $10, whatever, it all adds up. And it all goes to our students, goes to our programs, goes to our services, because we want to make sure you have the best experience possible. You know, you have it's a lot of resources, a lot of options. I love being on campus and walking the yard. It's just, it just feels right. It feels great. So I love our students. All right. All right. Uh, Senator Lou, can I can use the mic, please? I was just wondering, do you have any like, tips on managing like, a successful portfolio? Well, let's see. Um, get a professional. <laughs> that would be the first one. Get a professional who knows how to do it and can provide you with some guidance. So the, the gentleman that I personally worked with, I worked with him for like 15 years almost. And we had a plan when I was 40 to retire at 60. And I retired at 60 because I used to ask him everything I needed to know. Um, I think the other piece is, you know, just really trying to keep your finger on the pulse of how the country's doing and sort of what some of the sentiments may be around the economy. That's something to keep track of. For you all, though, it's a long game. 
which is kind of nice. You can ebb and flow with the way the market is moving. You can be more aggressive when you're younger with your portfolio because you have a longer term. Like if I was just starting at, uh, let's say, 50, I'd have to be a little less aggressive to make sure I hold on to money. But now that you guys are, um, you know, in your early 20s and, and such, you can really, you can really play. You can play with a portion of it. You can be innovative and creative. You have a friend that has a business and you want to support or something that really grabs you that you're passionate about. You can do that. So definitely get a professional. They're not as expensive as it seems and start early. So those are, those are two things I'd say. That's a great question. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, just in lieu of time constraints, uh, we will have to, uh, you know, land similar to Lou's question, we have to be the last, but you are free and more than likely to reach out to uh, President Primrose in email. Uh, but we do have to move forward in, in our uh, General Assembly. But thank you so very much for coming out. Thank you. All right. Are, is there any public participation or student concerns? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. It's, the mic is in the middle. Oh, sorry. Um, this is actually a question for um, the speaker that was just up. And, you know, I love to know and love to hear about how sophisticated Towson is now. Um, all these advancements, the Towson system, all these new and exciting things. I want to know oh, why. Excuse Jackie, me, point of order. Um, this isn't a uh, question and answer session. Um, I'm asking a question. But it, but you're asking a question to the previous speaker, and this isn't a session for that right now. But if you do want to answer a question, you're more than welcome to reach out to her via email, please. I mean, it is a broader question, so. I'm it, sorry. It, it, it is a broader question. It could be asked to all. Just for the rules of order, if you could frame your question as a um, statement, it's a public statement and student concerns. So you can raise them as concerns and to inform the student senate um, on matters of your concerns. But this is this is not a question and answer period, as Vice President Bell shared. So uh, feel free to proceed, though. It's a short statement. Anyways. Why does this funding come from endowment money, which is 88 million of such, that goes into mul multiple weapon manufacturers that are not only connected to Baltimore systemic issues, the prison industry, and genocide in Palestine? That's my question. Thank you. All right. Are there any more student concerns about the participation in the gallery? Um, yes, you can come to the middle, please. And you do have a two minute uh, time, uh, time limit. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Delilah. I just wanted to speak in support of a bill which I believe is being proposed today. Um, a, a lot of us here in the audience are urging SGA to vote in support of this divestment resolution. Towson students are outraged by our university's lack of response to the most well documented genocide of our time, which the International Court of Justice agrees is plausibly genocide. Over 250 students so far have signed on to support for our petition in support of this bill, um, calling for the Towson University Foundation to divest. According to the most recent reports available to the public, the TU Foundation has investments in different funds. And within these different funds, there are investments in various companies, some of which are directly complicit in the illegal occupation, displacement, and genocide in Palestine. This includes real estate companies on illegally occupied territory, weapons manufacturers, and companies that restrict water and other resources. It would be very easy for the foundation to switch and simply invest in different funds with, without these harmful companies under them. SGA, please listen to the student body and vote in favor of the divestment resolution being proposed. It is a humane thing to do and a material way that we as, we as a student body can stand against genocide. Thank you. All right. Um, once again, in essence of time constraints, uh, we will move on from this sec section. But thank you to. Oh, okay. Well, uh, as I was, that's what we said <laughs> somewhere else. Um, is there anybody else in the gallery? Do forgive me for my <laughs> that comment. Uh, yes, please. In the middle. Uh, 
Hello. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hi, my name is B. I'm a student here. I'm a graduating senior, and I identify as a member of Towson University's disabled community. I would like to speak on behalf of Towson's disabled community to be in support of the upcoming resolution that will be voted on in a couple weeks or so. Um, the investments made by the TU Foundation with the weapons manufacturers ultimately contribute to the mass disablement of Palestinians. So for, uh, specifically um, with sniper rifles, they are used to keep, uh, do the practice called knee capping, in which Israeli soldiers would shoot people in the kneecaps to prevent movement and it results in permanent disability. So uh, if you want to represent the disabled community at Towson University, I kindly urge you to vote in favor of this resolution. Thank you. All right, is there anybody else um, in the gallery that has any student concerns? Yes, sir. Hello, I'm Richard. Uh, I am an alumni of House University. I graduated last year in May. And I want to, and I would love to say that I am proud to be a graduate of Towson University. Uh, uh, but how can I be proud to be a graduate of Towson University when, the, when uh, institutionally the Towson Foundation is investing in funds that are sure that are uh, uh, that support the mass uh, killing and ethnic cleansing and displacement of Palestinian people? How can I be proud of that? Uh, and there is, uh, this has been uh, been aware for months, and it is time for Towson University to divest. So, uh, so I can be proud to say that I'm a member of the Towson community. I am a, uh, I am a proud Jew, and I don't want this genocide to be carried out in my name. Uh, and it's, I. How many more people have to have to be killed before divestment happens? How many bodies does it take? Thank you. All right. Um, is there any more student concerns about participation in the gallery? All right. Oh yes, uh, President Primrose. Hi, I just wanted to, to thank everyone for your heartfelt remarks, your sentiments. I, I definitely feel the passion. One of the things that I want to say is that I'm proud that uh, here at Towson, we value student voice. And as I mentioned, I've been on the foundation board for about oh, a little over seven years. If you, in fact, end up uh, passing the resolution, we will work with you to do the research to find a solution, um, we will be transparent. You know, we do have student representation on our board, and it really, uh, I think, creates a connection with the students. And you know, one of the things that I want to mention about portfolios is that mutual funds usually uh, encompass many, many companies. And so we are responsible. Um, we are conscientious, and we appreciate you bringing this to our attention. If in fact the resolution passes, you can count on us to do the research and work collaboratively, collaboratively with you. I just wanted to say that, um, just so you know that we really do care about this issue, we care about our students, and I know our president has also worked very hard to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to have a voice. So thank you. All right, thank you, President Primrose, and thank you for all the students who came up and, and gave some remarks. Uh, just one last time, is there any motion or concerns of public participation in the gallery? Hearing them, seeing them, thank you all again so very much, and um, yes, thank you all for being here. Thank you. All right, moving on and, and, and we moving on to communications. Uh, first, the advisor's remarks. Thank you. 
Happy Tiger Tuesday. Happy Tiger Tuesday. I have a few things to share with you. Uh, first is, that's not my time. <laughs> first is um, also that Happy Tiger Fest week. So um, we are, yes, yeah, sticking to Tiger Fest. It's an exciting time of the academic year celebration. The weather is in cooperation. We love that. Um, so I hope you all are able to get out to the events that CAB is running this week and that you bought your tickets for the concert. Anybody going? I'll go. Oh. All right. I'll see you there. Um, the other thing is it's also SGA election week. Um, so noting that elections will happen on tomorrow and Thursday um, during the regular business hours. There will be polling locations around campus. Um, if you choose to vote at a polling station, you are likely to receive a donut. So save your vote so you can get a donut. Um, in addition to, no, there was another election thing, Never mind. Um, the other piece is um, some of you may have received a email about a survey, the Pathways of Public Service and Civic Engagement Survey. Um, it was a, a small sample of the university student body who received that email, but it is important information that is being collected about social change. So if you have the time, I strongly encourage that if you receive that email to please fill it out so that we are collecting the information we need to make informed decisions about social change. I yield. All right, appropriations chair. Apologies. Um, appropriations will be happening this Friday, one o'clock, sorry, two o'clock. So everyone should be in attendance. Any questions? Comments, concerns? No. I yield. I wanted to first thank Hendrick and Rose for coming and talking today. Appreciate the words. Um, congrats to everyone in budget allocation. We finished that. So that will be coming to the GA floor to vote on next week. Um, and then we will have GovOps review on the bill on the floor today, tomorrow. I don't know what time, five to six. Any questions? That I do. Floor is committed. Happy Tiger Tuesday. We will be having rules this Friday. Uh, at 12 o'clock, so feel free to stop by. The bylaws will be finished by then, so we'll be reviewing that and then prepare to send them to the floor for next Tuesday. Any questions? All right, and with that, I yield. Happy Tiger Tuesday, everybody. I hope you guys are excited for the Tiger Fest this week to see Sexy Red and Little Papa. <laughs> Uh, There's a few updates for you all. I'm not sure uh, if we've shared, but with the Mental Health Day Resolution 10 that was passed in the Student Senate, um, the Academic Senate did refer it to the Academic Standards Committee in the last meeting, and so it'll be back before the main body in their next meeting, which takes place the first Monday of May, which looks like is it the 6th. Um, so it'll be heard again uh, May 6th at 4 o'clock. And so we're hopeful that does that sound not right? No. Hmm. The first Monday of May. Oh, wait. Am I right? Academic Senate? Okay. <laughs> All right. So the Academic Senate will be hearing the mental health or the Wellness Day resolution that we um, passed again on May 6th. And their next meeting, we're hopeful that it'll um, get passed there. I also want to thank Councilman Artel and President Primrose for coming out today. We certainly appreciate hearing um, from our leadership. And so if you all want to have any questions for them, they are still here and we'll share their contact with you as well. Um, I also just want to encourage everybody to stay um, engaged with the elections happening this week. Announcement will be Thursday uh, at five o'clock. And so there will be no pre-meeting this week. And with that, my announcements are over and I just want to quickly turn it over to member of the week. Uh, this person has worked for two administrations now really hard on a number of initiatives inside and outside of the department. Um, I think they really do a lot of work behind the scenes to make SGA run and um, support our students and our clubs and, and just 
You know the Towson campus overall, so help me congratulate and thank for their hard work. Assistant Director Ajani. <laughs> Are there any questions? Oh, okay. Thank you. Without a yield. Um, all right. Um, all right. Um, Attorney General Jello. Hey guys, happy Tiger Tuesday. Happy Tiger Tuesday. Um, just a few reminders. Um. If you're not going to be in GA or pre-meeting, just uh, fill out an absence request. Should there be an emergency, I know sometimes people just text me, let me know, and I usually just say, like, um, you know, once you get the chance, just fill out the absence request, but emergency, like, be good to go. And then also, I just want to stress and emphasize the cleanliness of our office. Um, there's just trash everywhere, and the tables are sticky and there's food residue um so um, yeah. uh yeah so just keeping our you know workspace clean and minus free any questions okay <laughs> Everybody, happy Tiger Tuesday. Happy Tiger Tuesday. Um, not much for me except for a banquet. It will be May 9th, Thursday, May 9th. Um, Deputy Chief of Staff Moore, he sent out uh invite link today. So please make sure you RSVP for that, whether you will be in attendance or not. But do know that mandatory it is mandatory for you to be there unless it's an emergency. Um, next, next week, we are having Student Appreciation Week. We have events on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So please come out and support. Have a good time. My committee, we plan some really good stuff for y'all. So yeah, spread the word. Student Appreciation Week. With that, I yield. All right. Uh, Department of Academic Affairs. Hello, everyone. This Friday, I am going to have a tabling event um, to poll students on what they would like to see TU do about improving academics. Um, and then tonight in the library, there is the long nap um, event going on. So, can I make you over there? That I am. Of civic engagement. Hello, everyone. So on April 22nd, which is next week, um, in collaboration with the Eco Coalition, we're doing an Earth Day block party. It's going to be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I yield. Our next meeting, the average. I'm sorry, the Department of Communications. There's, there's a lot of C's right here. <laughs> All right. Hey, everyone, I hope you're enjoying your Tuesday. Um, we recently, in collaboration with Director Brown, planned and recorded a promo video for the Hub to highlight that resource available for students and just to get them more uh, traffic. Uh, we are having a group meet giveaway for our public chat next week for Student Appreciation Week, so make sure you um, let, let your friends know. And oh, we're also in the final stages of a big end of the school year giveaway as well. Any questions? Are you? Probably not going to the average. Hi, everyone. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. So um, if you guys don't know already, Impact to You is this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. But check-in starts at 8 a.m. and will end promptly at 9 a.m. So if you are not there before 9 a.m., your spot can be given away to walk-in participants. Um, all the people that are already registered for Impact to You, you should receive an email by 
24 to 48 hours before the big the not big event um impact to you um and if you are not coming and you are an SGA you have to submit an absence request form because this is a mandatory event um, and then on Monday, April 22nd, which is this upcoming Monday, um, from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., Community Outreach will be hosting a Paint a Pot event. So essentially, you can come, paint a pot, get a little plant, learn a little bit about Earth Day, and then just chill with us. And then I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Oh, any questions? With that, I am. Um... <laughs> Department of Diversity and Inclusion. Hi, everyone. So, A.D. Johnson and I will be submitting graphics this week, one for Asian Pacific American Month, as well as Cinco de Mayo, where I'm also going to forward you the email I talked about with your mark. Any questions? I Department of Health and Wellness. Hey guys, again. Um, all right. There's a blood drive this Wednesday in the Union second floor from 9 to 2 p.m. And participants can receive a t shirt, $20 Amazon gift card, and a $10 gift card to a place of their choice. And the link will go out with the flyer soon. It says this Wednesday. Where is it? I can find out unless you know. <laughs> it says this Wednesday. If it's not, I'll let y'all know. With that, I oh, wait. Any questions? Okay, with that, I am. Um, the public special project. The blood drive is next Wednesday, so yes. Hi, everyone. Um, the, tomorrow is going to be the, this is not my event, sorry. The Green Health Professionals Open Forum. They're going to have food, and they're just going to talk about healthcare, the healthcare profession. And I think there's a guest speaker. And with that, I will. All right, it's uh, Senator Williams. Where is it at? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, all right, the public of budget projects. I'm sorry, the public of marketing. I'll be trying to do anyone wants. Uh, no report. <laughs> the public of student services and affairs. Happy Tiger Tuesday, all. Happy Tiger Tuesday. I have a few things to report. Um, currently, I am planning the senior cookout, which is scheduled for May 8th from 4 to 8 on Towson Town Field. Um, there's going to be a giveaway, so, you know, start thinking about that, put that on your calendar. Um, as President Colquitt said, we did go to the Academic Senate, um, again, for the mental health bill. Um, I've been working with Chief of Staff of Coma and the whole committee on planning Student Appreciation Week. So that's exciting. Make sure you guys come out next week. We worked really hard on everything. Um, yesterday, I met with Airmark to strengthen our relationship with them and make sure that their events are being promoted through us so that the student body is more aware of them. So when I do become aware of events, I will make sure that everyone knows. I am also working with TUPD for Safety Day, which is April 25th in Paul's Pavilion. Um, so more information to come out about that as well. And last thing, as 
communications director battle said we made a video for the hub and that video will be dropping tomorrow so please make sure you like share and comment on that so students can be made aware of these resources any questions and with that i yield Problem with student organizations no report Problem with industry development Hello everyone. So Transfer Council had a successful ice cream social tabling today. And then um, we also had a successful tabling at um, Admitted Students Day, the past two ones. So that was really good. And then I've been in contact with Brittany DeBose, who's the Assistant Director of Transfer Recruit Recruitment. And we're in contact about a possible program highlighting the Transfer student experience. Any questions? And with that, I go. Military and veterans representative. All right, y'all. Everyone have a good Tuesday. Weather's warm, spirits high, and grades are low. It's that time of semester. <laughs> it's that time of semester. I'm starting to give up, but I can't because my GPA means a lot. All right. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm going to try to keep it brief. Uh, we've had some. Okay. Um, we had some tabling events uh, for the New Student Minutes Day, and the TU MBC fan group is actually like kicking up like way better than we ever thought. We do have over 400 like uh, military family members here, so I'm happy to see that they're starting to get like a, a space where they're like represented. And with that, ROTC was just out in the woods for the past four days out there shrugging and we all survived and we all got good grades on all everything we had to uh, get, but it was not fun. And we was, eat, we was eating food out of bags, y'all. It's not fun. Uh, any questions on anything I said? If y'all have like friends who are like, my dad was in the military, he paid for my college, uh, send them my way so I can give them some resources about this UMBC fan group. All right? All right? All right, thank you. How's that are you? Okay, now pause up. Everybody pause up real quick. Someone take a picture. All right, thank you. All right. <laughs> um, I'm glad I can pray about the University is President's government representative. Um, good day, everybody. Uh, so our vice president is currently working on changes on the constitution and we are also having a fun final festival on may 11th it's going to be at towson town field from 1 to 4 p.m the rsvp is up at involved at tu any questions i am transfer student representative uh freshman council representative Hello everyone. Um, we've just been working on the freshman council pageant, and that's pretty much it. That I yield. Oh, it's my turn. Hey. Happy Tiger Tuesday, everybody. Tiger Tuesday. Thank you. Uh, so first things first. Uh, resolution fifteen, which will be reviewed tonight, uh, will be on the second reading during special session at five p.m. on May second in College of Arts room two three ten. Um, that's on the Thursday. Uh, two weeks and two days from now. Um, okay, I just to correct them, 2310 and CLA. Um, just a reminder that Impact to you is this Saturday and it is mandatory an event, unless otherwise excused. And on Representative Mark uh, Robinson's note, as the semester begins to hit its last lap, I first applaud each and every one of you uh, for pushing through this far. Uh, as finals are massively approaching, just remember that you have this, you are smart, and you will pass your exams. Uh, well, I, I'm believing myself too, so hopefully I've had my Myself and others are here for you if you find yourself overwhelmed. And don't be afraid to reach out. You know, we all are a big SGA fam, and we also have resources on, on Thompson's campus. But if you uh, do feel yourself overwhelmed and stressed, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I, I may be sleeping in the night, but I'll get back to you in the morning. Um, <laughs> but um, I'll be there for you if you need me. Besides those people, I was sleeping now. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's it. But that I am. Um, are there any opinions of the court? Yeah. 
There are no opinions of the court. All right, thank you. Are there any motions on the floor? Apologies. We're going to move to a quorum call first. Okay, we have a quorum. Are there any motions on the floor? Governor Roberts, Sir Crosby. Motion of Rick Center rules to review the budget change added to the agenda. Yes, budget change to be right. All right. Is there a second? Thank you, uh, Appropriations Chair Jackson. And with that, we can now move into a vote on breaking Senate rules to review budget change number three. Once the vote is open, go ahead and use your clicker. that the motion has passed and we can now move into the review phase of budget change number three since it's not on our agendas it's pulled up on the screen and you guys also will have a copy of this as soon as possible if you would like it but government operations your crosby seeing as you're the author of this bill would you like to do so? just introduce it and say a little bit about it yeah, um, so this is a uh, supplemental request from the University Student Nurses Association. They're having events uh, on the seniors here on campus. So they're requesting a total of $1,051.79 to cover the food. And then they're asking for an additional $200 to um, cover the ECS costs. And the reason we're breaking set of rules is because the event is on May 2nd. So they need the funds to lock it in with ECS. And I know Treasurer um, Wally is not here, but this is well within our range as far as uh, budget is concerned. So it would be good to pass it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Are there any questions, comments, concerns? Okay, seeing none, we can move into a vote on budget change number three. Well, it's not open. And with that, the motion is passed and budget change number three is approved. Are there any other motions on the floor? Governor Operation Chair Crosby. Um, motion to inquire about resolution number 15. Is there a second? Thank you, Senator Bendu. And with that, we can now move into a vote. All right, the motion is passed. 
But uh, just a quick point of clarification. Since this is first reading, uh, this is just inquiry, not review. So this is just, once it's introduced, you know, there can only be questions asked about it. There's no opinion stated. But uh, Government Operations Chair Crosby and Senator Fifty and Wilson, since you guys are the authors of, of this bill, mm -hmm. could you just come up and introduce it, say a little bit about it? And another quick note, uh, in second reading, which will be the second reading of this bill, you can still ask questions that you may have, but it also follows up with uh, comments or concerns about the bill as a whole. Okay, good evening all. Um, I'm Senator Fithian Wilson. I was contacted by the uh, YDSA, Young Democratic Socialist America, and to sponsor this bill, and I am gladly doing so. Um, yeah. Obviously, I am Governor Operations Chair Crosby. Um, I was also looped in on this bill. Um, that was one of those concerns. So, first start off by just reading it. Everybody has a good package. But, well. um, whereas over 33,000 Palestinians have been murdered since October 7th, 2023, over 75,000 Palestinians remain injured, and tens of thousands more have been injured and murdered by Israeli occupation since I don't mess it up, in 1948. Whereas in 2022, the United Nations declared that the Israeli occupation is unlawful under international law. Whereas Israel has indiscriminately bombed the Gaza Strip, including Rafa, which it had previously designated as a safe zone and in the process destroyed every university in the Gaza Strip. Whereas Israel has committed war crimes, including but not limited to international murder of civilians, sexual violence, and targeting of hospitals. Whereas the Townsend University Foundation is a client of multiple investment firms that enable the genocide of Palestinian people, including Vanguard and BlackRock. Some of these funds invest in companies, including but not limited to Caterpillar, Chevron, Genie Energy, and Primo Water Corporation that enable the genocide of Palestinian people through occupation, displacement, and settlement, as well as major weapon manufacturers who supply Israel with tools that enable their legal occupation. Whereas the Tausch University Student Government Association has a quote commitment to advocating for peace, justice, and humanitarian values on a global scale. Therefore, be it resolved, the Student Senate of the 103rd Student Government Association of Tausch University urges the Tausch University Foundation to completely divest from all companies and funds that invest in companies, including but not limited to all those on the AFSC's divestment list that facilitates the illegal occupation, displacement, and settlement of Palestine. Um, so along with that, um, we work with President Colquitt on this initiative, as well as the Towson University Foundation, um, and to promote specifically, um, Jordan met with her to discuss ways that we can make this happen behind the scenes, because as you know, just passing it here doesn't really make change, just what happens after we leave here. So we worked alongside, as you heard, and to most say that she's open and willing to find solutions to this and that it passes here. So if you have any questions for us, I hope um, I also just wanted to say that along with the writing of this bill, we realized there are um, transparency um, discrepancies that we would like kind of clarified in the future, and we will be proceeding to write legislation um, regarding that as well. Any questions, Senator Liu? Oh. And one last thing, so sorry. And then I am um, I remember somebody was brought to me that concerned about research. The research was provided to us by Wadi Say when we first originally met. And once it goes to government operations uh, committee, we'll be adding that just into the bill. So the next time you have it, there will be research included in the bill packet. But go ahead, Senator. Oh, so I have a question about like the then then for the law. I have like a, a wording question to you. Is it like you can fully divest of all company and fund that investing company? How do you like divest and then invest? You know, it's to completely divest from all companies and funds that invest in companies. So you have mutual funds that kind of have a group of companies included in them versus just, just investing in companies. So it's 
both. You want to divest from both, if you get what I'm saying. Can you explain that more? So funds, there are funds that exist. Those funds could like hold other companies in it. So you can invest in the fund and then your money is spread out between companies underneath that fund. Do you get what I'm saying? So we want to divest from the fund itself. Makes sense. I suppose, and if I may ask, I suppose you can think of it like the S&P 500, I suppose it provides, you can invest in the S&P 500, but you're investing in like the top companies in the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. You're investing in one singular thing, but in actuality, you're investing in multiple different companies that provide you with your greatest yield of earning. Any questions, any other questions? Well, seeing none, hearing none, uh, thank you, Governor Operations Chair Crosby and Senator Fithian Wilson for introducing the bill. <laughs> And just and just a reminder that the second reading of this bill will take place in a special session on May 2nd and committee I motion, I motion to um, table this resolution to May 2nd for a special session. Okay, is there a second? A second. Thank you, Governor Operation Chair Crosby. And once the vote is open, who votes will vote on tabling this resolution? until May 2nd when the special session occurs. I'm going to make a recommendation before we open the vote to withdraw the motion to allow this resolution to go to committee. And then when second reading of on the normal timeline occurs next week, that's when we can table it for the special session. But just for the order of things, the, how it should go is first reading, then committee, then second reading. So if we table it now, we would technically be uh, out of order to bring it to committee because it's a tabled resolution. Makes sense. Okay. So, no motion needed. Right? I withdraw my own motion. Oh, thank you, Senator Fifty Wilson. And it's, it's been referred to Government Operations Committee, so it will go there tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow at yeah. five to six. All right. It'll be there tomorrow at five to six in the SGA office. So, uh, please feel free to stop by if you have any opinions or uh, interest in that. Are there any announcements? Nicole Quinn. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay, um, as y'all know, there are a lot of events next week. I know this is a really uh, rough time though academically. We're trying to get to the finish line. Many of us are graduating. I just want to say, stay the course. Y'all got this. Um, and be active. Take part in SGA. Have pride. Tiger pride. Do what you can though. It's manageable for you. Uh, but there are a lot of fun activities lined up for Student Appreciation Week, and some that are not even um, affiliated with the week, but they just happen to take place next week and in the coming weeks. So just stay focused, stay dedicated. Uh, we have a few more weeks left of the 103rd administration. 
I know I'm excited. I'm honored to continue working alongside all of you all. So let's just stay the course and finish strong, everybody. Announcements, any other announcements? <laughs> Vice Minister, no. no. Which one? Oh, that one. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Just for a clarifying date from earlier, the blood drive will be on uh, April 23rd from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And you use 322, 323, and 325. So I believe the followers. So, yeah. <laughs> so they'll be up there next Wednesday um, on the 23rd of April. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. Are right, there. Any other announcements? Well, got my operations check off. We can take it away. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, with that, we can now move to motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you.